right guys welcome back to the channel hope you're all well back down Brixham now we usually come down here say around four times a year but uh, like everyone else prices have shot up and this is the second and probably the last time this year as for the fishing well the weather forecast this week is absolutely shocking couldn't have picked the worst week to be honest but um, there we are gale force winds we got very heavy rain most days so uh, it's going to be a case of finding a gap in the weather and just going for it i'll be doing a bit of spinning a bit of float fishing a bit of bottom fishing and hopefully i can put something together guys enjoy the video So, back on Briggs and Breakwater, we're about an hour into the flood. Just had my first cast, I'm using two rods. On the one rod, there's a three hook flapper rig with size 2 hooks. Now usually, when I use a flapper, I uh, use size 1 or size 1 hooks. But tonight, I want to see if I can get through some of those smaller fish and get into some of those better whiting. On the other rod, there's a 4-0 Paternoster panel, and that one is for big baits. At this very spot, in the past, I've had some cracking bullhess and some nice conger reel too, so uh, you never know. I've got ragworm, mackerel, squid, bluey, and a few sand eel. The weather, it's not the best. We've got quite a stiff northwesterly, some nasty showers, but uh, it is what it is. Can't do much about it. I'll persevere, and hopefully, we can have a good night's fishing. Well, the very first cast of the night, and uh, we got two half-decent white in, in fairness. This one on the top hook took a piece of squid. There we are. Oops. All right, son, I'm gonna pop you back now. There we are. And, uh, this bottom one, a bit smaller. He took uh, took some ragworm. Yeah, he's not as big. Yeah, not a bad little white in on the bluey. There's so many out there. If you're wondering what those strange noises are, it's actually seals. They're fairly close to me as well. At night time, they make those kind of squealing noises. Talking of seals, this afternoon, I uh, had a bit of a window, a window of opportunity, and uh, I took the spinning rod, the other side of the harbour, found a little rocky area, caught six or seven garfish, nice bit of fun, but uh, on the last one, I was winding it in, and really close in, a seal appeared from nowhere and tried to grab it. <laughs> and uh, I actually got it on camera. The garfish, as it happens, got away anyway, it came off my hook. But uh, it was quite the impressive sight. I'll show you that right about now. And another one. Is that a garfish or a mackerel? B 
been fishing now for around 20 minutes and uh, <laughs> it's just non-stop bites. Soon as that bait is hitting the water, the fish are onto it straight away. Hopefully, as that tide starts to push in a bit more, the fish will get bigger. But uh, to be honest, if that doesn't happen, I'll still enjoy it. To me, a fish is a fish. I'm out fishing, bit of fresh air, can't fault it. Now, the flapper rig, I'm giving a bit of a whack, but the 4.0 Papanoster panel with a big bait on, I'm casting that no more than, say, 40 yards. In front of me, you've got some rocks which protrude outwards by approximately 30 yards. And uh, in my experience, the bigger species, like your bull hearse and your conger eel, tend to hang around there, just on the edge of those rocks. And that's where I'm putting that big bait. At the moment, on that uh, rig, I've got a big piece of fresh mackerel, but uh, so far, nothing. But plenty of time yet. Be patient. And that is what you call a tangled mess. <laughs> what have you done to my rig? <laughs> oh well, something a bit different anyway. But uh, that rig is a goner. We got a small strap conger. No idea what it took. <laughs> You greedy thing. Right, I'll uh, get this one unhooked and we'll pop him back in. Yeah, that water is pushing in lovely now. I've got a six ounce lead on each of those rigs. No need for a gripper here. There's not much of a current or a rip. Whereas back home on the well side of the Bristol Channel, I'm always using a gripper because uh, the rip and the currents can be incredible. On a big tide, it's sometimes difficult to hold bottom, but uh, it's no problem here. You could argue that the tackle I'm using tonight is a bit too heavy, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm on holiday and there's only so much stuff I can bring, you know? Now, I'm just about to wind in this flapper rig because, uh, oh, there we go. But also, the big bait rod, that's going as well. But uh, it's something small pecking at the bait. It's literally non-stop. The problem is, it's getting through to the bigger species. The water must be black with fish. And like I said before, it's great to see. Right, let's take a look at this one. Ah, this time, this whiting took a piece of squid. Again, it's not very big. But, uh, they're keeping me entertained. <laughs> Another baby strap conger. He took a light into the ragworm on the middle hook. Got my rag. There he is. I 
I think there's quite a few of these out there tonight. Caught in trouble, as per usual. There we go. Nicely unhooked. Right, son, let's get you back in. For me, fish welfare is really important. It's always at the top of my agenda and uh, I won't go anywhere without one of these disgorges. Absolutely brilliant things. For example, tonight, most of the fish that I've caught have been cleanly hooked, that's fine, but some of them have been deeply hooked. But by using one of these, it allows for safe and easy removal of that hook. And uh, nine times out of 10, the fish will swim off no problem whatsoever. Whether it's a two ounce poutin or a 12 pound bull hus, I'll treat that fish with the utmost respect. And uh, I think the same can be said for the majority of anglers out there because ultimately we're conservationists. Well, at last, I've caught a fish on the big bait rig, but uh, the fish is not so big. This small conger took a big mackerel and squid cocktail bait. Unbelievable. Here he is. Let's get him unhooked. This feels a bit better. Oh, just come off. Oh, I just lost a good fish then. That was a good fish. Come off right in close. Damn. Never mind. Let's get him back out there. Yep, the pout in and out in force now. <laughs> Got a double shot. We're around two and a half hours off high water now. I probably had 20, 25 fish. I'm not showing you everyone, guys, but uh, you get the gist. Stacks of bites. I've had a bite every single cast, literally. And um, I've not had to wait more than 20 seconds for a bite. Unbelievable, really. Now, of course, most of that is small stuff pecking away at the bait. But uh, in amongst that lot, there are going to be some better fish, and hopefully, I'll get one. Well, I'm sorry that the last session came to an abrupt end, but uh, the weather took a turn for the worse. The heavens opened, literally, and that northwesterly wind came back with force. It became impossible to fish, and it became impossible to film. We're now two days later, I'm back on the breakwater, the tide is going out, it's on the ebb, and I fancy having a bit of a spin. Once again, the weather is all over the shop, 
It's about to rain any minute now, but uh, I'm just gonna crack on with it. I've got my 10 foot spinning rod, a standard spinning reel, 10 pound line all the way through, and on the end, I've got this 30 gram metal lure, or metal spinner, if you like. Nice and weighty, and I can give that a good whack. Now, in a sec, I'm gonna get my pliers, and I'm gonna remove one of the hooks off that treble and uh, then it'll be a lot easier to remove from the fish. Anyway, let's get cracking and let's see what's out there. And that is a cracker of a mackerel. What a cracker, a proper Brixham autumnal chunk. There he is. Can't fault it. On that 10 foot spinning rod, they don't half go. Such a powerful fish mackerel, great fighters. I'm enjoying this. The tide is dropping quite quick. Personally, I prefer to fish the flood, but uh, like I said in my intro, this week is all about picking spots or picking gaps in the weather and just going for it. It's absolutely lashing down now. Oh, that's a cracker. Here's a nice one. I'll just wipe that camera lens and uh, I'll show you properly then. I'm sorry guys if the quality of your footage is not great, but uh, like I said, I'm trying to battle, <laughs> battle the weather, you know? or contend with the weather. Lovely.
Well, as you saw, it absolutely hammered down my rain. And to be honest, the fishing went a bit quiet. So uh, I popped back to the house, got something to eat, and I've now popped back down. The tide is coming back in. It's on the flood. I'll give it another hour or so, and uh, I'll call it quits then. I just want to thank everyone for watching the videos, for commenting, etc. It's very much appreciated. And also, I want to thank my channel members and uh, I'll give you guys a quick shout out now. I got my piece of paper. So, my channel members are Simon Jenkins, Soul Searcher, Andrew Jones, Team Shepherd Fishing Adventures, Gary Foster, Dan Keynes, Mark Hopkins, John Adron, Swamp Dog, Jason Spears, Welsh Fisher, Matt Coates, Ian Taylor, Alex Ainley, Robert Langley, Sarah Brown, David Williams, and Chris Cooper. Nice one, guys. Cheers. Well, you know me. I was meant to be going back to the house, but uh, I couldn't resist having a few more casts. I just took a walk over to Battery Gardens because I wanted to fish off the rocks. It's a bit blowy to be honest, but uh, found a nice spot here. Got this nice cliff face next to me and uh, that's providing a nice bit of shelter from the wind. Now this time, I'm going to use a float. To be honest, this float's a bit too big, but uh, it's all I got with me. And for bait, I'm using a small piece of fresh mackerel. It's one that I caught earlier. Size 4 hook, tiny bits of mackerel. Let's have a go. I tell you what, these rats close in. I love this mackerel. Only small, but uh, it's a bit of fun. What a stunning little fish. Very close in, but uh, that's what you'd expect, you know. They love hiding in the rocks and in the kelp. Look at the colours on this one. Absolutely stunning. That's a better one. Here we go. I could stay here all evening. I might do yet. He's gone. There we are, garfish on the float. Like mini torpedoes there. Oh, he's taking that mackerel right down. I'll have to use my disgorger on this one, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Nice little pollock there.
Here we are, a lovely little pollock on the float. Not far off a pound, 